Imagine this scenario. You and your team spend two weeks building an advertising campaign to be distributed in a national magazine. You're in charge of finalizing each image and sending the finals out to the printer. You've printed several copies at work in order to refine each image since this campaign is vital to your startup company. You send all the files out and a month later your boss opens up the magazine to find that your company logo is no longer the powerful red and black design that you and your team built, but rather a muddy mixture of dark gray and magenta. However unrealistic this scenario might be, it illustrates the importance of color management. All right, let's talk about the importance of color management, and then I'll take you through a quick setup so that you can get started right away. First of all, it's important to manage your colors before you start working, especially if you're going to be working for print. If you're working for web, not such a big issue because most of the web colors are going to be translated across different monitors pretty much no matter what you do. So even if you set up your monitor to be perfect on somebody else's monitor, it's going to be completely different. However, if you're working in print, you want your monitor to be as close to the output colors that will be printed out as possible. Uh, this is not such a huge issue if you're just using your inkjet printer at home. Most of those color settings will be taken care of by your printer. However, if you're using a professional printer, or even if you're taking it to FedEx Kinko's to get printed out, you're going to want to make sure that your color settings are set so that what you see on your monitor is the finished product that gets printed out. So let's come up here to edit and click on that. Go down to color settings. Now at first glance, this looks like a whole lot of different settings. It can get a little bit confusing. It can be a little bit intimidating, but let me just go over a couple of things that you might want to change. And most of this, you can pretty much leave the same. So as you can see, the default setting is North America General Purpose 2. And most of the time, that's going to be just fine. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to drop this down and set it to Adobe RGB 1998. Now, the reason that I'm doing this is because by default, it's set to sRGB. Now, sRGB is totally fine. You can use it and still get some great results. But the Adobe RGB 1998 color space will open up a broader range and depth of colors than the sRGB color space. And the reason that is, is because the sRGB color space was created specifically for computer monitors, whereas the Adobe RGB color space had a broader range of functionality in mind when they created it. So let's just switch right over to that. CMYK, I'm gonna leave this alone right now, but keep in mind if you're working with a specific printer, he may give you color settings to load in. If that's the case, you just simply click on the CMYK dropdown as I've done here, scroll up to load CMYK, and then simply just navigate to whichever profile you, and then simply just navigate to the profile that he gave you and use that. Most of the rest of this, I'm gonna keep the same. With the sole exception right here, Personally, this is a personal preference. I like to have profile mismatches checked because I like to know when my color profile is changing. Again, do you have to have it as a beginning user? Not at all. And the only other change that I'm going to make in here is I'm going to shut off use dither. Again, this is a personal preference. I just don't necessarily like the look of dither. I'd rather have a solid color. Now, for more information about any of these settings, you can see down here in the description <laughs> the description even has a description of itself. All you have to do is move your cursor over whatever you're not sure about. Now, if we look down at the description, it says working spaces. The working space specifies the working color profile for each color model, blah, 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 blah. If you hover over the gray itself, dot gain 20% uses a space that reflects a dot gain of 20%. Anything else in here you don't need to know from a beginner standpoint. And we're going to cover all of this in depth in a later series. So in the meantime, go ahead and click OK, and your colors are set. You are ready to get to work. That's all for now. Please remember to comment, rate, and subscribe below. And if you have any questions, send them to requests at mahalo.com. Thanks for watching.